Several U.S. Navy sailors appear to be okay after a nuclear submarine that they were on collided with an unknown object in the South China Sea. Roxana Severi is in London uh, with more information on this story as well as uh, other international headlines today. Roxana, good morning. Good morning, Anne-Marie. U.S. officials say the USS Connecticut hit some kind of object while submerged in international waters in the South China Sea on Saturday. They said several sailors were injured, but the Navy attack submarine is still fully working. It's not yet clear what the submarine struck, but officials say it could have been a sunken vessel or container. Hey, what's up, guys? Tyler here with Secure Team with my third video and I think about a day and a half now. If you didn't see last night's video, there was something very strange that was sighted above Chicago. So head over, check that video out, throw it a like. But today I want to talk about a news story that just occurred where instead of discussing UFOs, things that are flying in the air, we're going to be talking about USOs or unidentified submerged or submersible objects which are essentially the exact same thing only one is in the sky and the other is an unknown object under any body of water it can be an ocean a lake a river and ufos have been spotted or shall i say usos have been spotted in said bodies of water for hundreds of years and so to start today's video, we have this new report here where a United States submarine, as you just saw in that video in the South China Sea, collided with an unknown object. That's what they're calling it at this moment. I'm sure that they will come up with a delightfully simple explanation as to what this object was. And so we had people injured. New details are still coming in. But at this point, all we know is that an unknown object uh, hit a submarine in the South China Sea and it reminded me of the videos I made in the past where we were seeing airliners being hit by unknown objects and I'm showing you some images here uh, and these were incidents where no birds or anything like that were involved. The pilots would describe seeing a light or a disc or an unknown object of some sort of shape coming near them and hitting the nose of the plane or striking the side of it, causing them to land. And when I heard this submarine story, you know, it brought me back to the old tales from Russia. If you remember back during the Cold War, a lot of stuff was going on and a lot of files were sealed. Well, back in the 2010s, Russia released a ton of files where we had Russian Navy officers describing what appeared to be a literal USO extravaganza. You know, it was almost as if they would see these things under the water of the oceans every other day of the week. Uh, here is an article you're seeing posted by RT or Russia Today and I have to say it was really hard to find this article because the original article that this was linked to didn't say very much and so when I clicked the link to actually get to this article I could not find it so then I went back to the Wayback Machine which allows you to bring up older screen grabs of news stories or websites you can go back to the first day of YouTube and see what it looks like and even the Wayback Machine was giving me 404 errors and saying that the page did not exist but I finally eventually found it Russian Navy UFO records say aliens love oceans and I just want to read some of this to you here and this was published I believe yeah 2009 2010 but it says quote the Russian Navy has declassified its records of encounters with unidentified objects technologically surpassing anything humanity ever built the records dating back to Soviet times were compiled by a special Navy group collecting reports of unexplained incidents delivered by submarines and military ships. The group was headed by Deputy Navy Commander Admiral Nikolay Smirnov, and the documents reveal numerous cases of possible UFO encounters, the website says. Vladimir Azazov, former Navy officer and a famous Russian UFO researcher, said the materials are of great value, further saying, quote, 50% of UFO encounters are connected with oceans, 15% more with lakes, so UFOs tend to stick to the water. On one occasion, a nuclear submarine that was out on a mission in the Pacific Ocean detected six unknown objects after which they were basically chased and the captain ordered them 
to maneuver the sub up to the surface. The objects followed suit, took to the air, and then flew away. So whatever these six objects were, they followed the submarine to the surface and then blasted out of the water and into space. The article goes on to say that many mysterious events have happened in the region of the Bermuda Triangle. We all know that. I've done many videos on it. You can simply search the term Bermuda Triangle on my channel and you'll get a ton of videos. But one submarine commander, Rear Admiral Yuri Bekitov, said that his instruments malfunctioned with no apparent reason or would detect a strong interference. The former Navy officer says this could have been a deliberate disruption by the UFOs or USOs. The submarine commander further stated, quote, On several occasions, the instruments gave readings of material objects moving at incredible speeds. Calculations showed speeds of about 230 knots of 400 kilometers per hour. Speeding so fast is a challenge even on the surface, but water resistance is much higher. It was like the objects defied the laws of physics, and there's only one explanation. The creatures who built them far surpass us in development. Navy intelligence veteran Captain First Rank Igor Barclay commented, quote, Ocean UFOs would often show up wherever our or NATO's fleets would concentrate. Near the Bahamas, the Bermudas, Puerto Rico, they are most often seen in the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean, in the southern part of the Bermuda Triangle, and also in the Caribbean Sea. And so I'll post the full link to this story here where you can read all of the other Russian sailors and admirals and captains uh, accounts of these strange USO sightings. But as mentioned a second ago where a lot of these things would show up, one of them was near Puerto Rico. And I don't have to remind you guys of one of the best, if not in my opinion, the single best evidence of an ocean-connected, unidentified object, which came in the form of a video by a government jet off the coast of Puerto Rico, where if you remember, it was in infrared, the object was spotted flying over the airport, where it then descended down into the water, never slowing in its speed for even a moment. Now, here's a website where George Knapp and a man by the name of Rich Hoffman, well, Mr. Hoffman, Hoffman was one of the principal analyzers of the Puerto Rico incident, and included in this news story is an interview where he shows us exactly what happened that night and some of the other very mysterious things that were happening off the coast of Puerto Rico in the ocean at that time. So take a listen and a watch to this here. We work on this very well, and we passed that, and we basically honored the fact that we're not going to talk about the witness's name and we're not going to give that, but we wanted to do this scientifically. So we spent two consecutive years analyzing 7,027 frames of a three minute and 54 second video uh, from that Aguadilla case. And we were going like down to the pixel level, looking to see if we could make out any kinds of determinations. And we also saw it in moving underneath the water. We said, well, what's that about? You know, how do you have an object that's below water showing this in thermal? Well, the thing is, if you think of, if there's a thing called a Bernoulli hump that you experience where the water, it's moving underwater, it's displacing the water around it, and you now get a rise, and that change in temperature would allow you to be able to factor out that well, okay, that's what the object is doing. It's moving underwater. It's actually displacing the water on the top, and it's changing the temperature, and that's what you're seeing, a ghost thing. So we literally tore that whole thing apart many, many ways, looked at it multiple thousands of times, and produced our report. The SCU team put together animation which shows the sequence of events. Unknown objects were seen off and on, both visually and on radar. Blips and lights that appeared, disappeared, and appeared again in different spots, just beyond the airport runway. The white objects on the screen are ones which were detected on radar, but which had no transponder signals associated with a known aircraft. A Department of Homeland Security plane was preparing to take off. Why don't you describe the sequence of events? that are shown on the okay. film, for those who don't know. No that. problem. So let me, let me tell you the story. Back up here. It's about, it's about 9 o'clock in the evening. It's completely pitch dark. 
and, and this is again is in April, so it's still pitch dark, and, and this is in Puerto Rico. And the uh, a Dash 8 aircraft loaded with four different uh, basically uh, people on board, it's a crew of four. You have a pilot, co pilot, you have a radar operator, and you also have a camera operator that are sitting in the back. And they're off on a drug smuggling mission. You know, that's what Homeland Security does. There's a lot of activity with that kind of thing down in Puerto Rico. And so, ultimately, they're taking off from the Rafael Hernandez Airport, and they're going from, uh, the airport kind of goes from a southwest to a northeast. So, when you're taking off, you're going directly into that wind that I talked about, right? So, it was about nine o'clock in the evening, there's a full moon, and there are about 50 hits of radar out in the water just to the north, uh, a little bit more to the west of that airport just offshore. And there's these 50 hits of this object that's doing some incredible changing and maneuvers and in and of itself is pretty wild. And then you've got about 1916 or so that there, this plane is now taking off and it's starting to gain, it's got cleared for takeoff. It's now up at, at just uh, maybe about 400 feet or so. The pilots are now looking over and they're seeing a light, a pinkish white light that is now coming in from the ocean and toward the airport. And it's going to be right in the flight path that they're going to go off on. And so they contacted the tower and, the tower and said, I thought you had us cleared for takeoff and what is this? And uh, they said that they saw the light as well from the control tower. So the crew decided that they would fly around it in a big circle. And so they started flying counterclockwise in a circle around the airport and, and they were watching this thing. Well, the light then goes off and they thought, well, okay, this could be drug smugglers because that's one of the things that they do. They turn off their lights and they drop their drugs or whatever they're going to do uh, and so that's they kept going around and, and so when they get to about the same area where they actually took off of uh, when it went dark the the pilot contacted behind him the camera operator and said turn on the thermal and let's record this so now you got that camera operator who is now turning on his camera and he's attempting to find that object. He finds the object and he starts to track it. And he's manually, manually moving that around to be able to keep that in, in line. And so here's this object that is now coming in. And if you've ever seen in thermal ranges, it looks like daylight on the actual images of the video, but completely it's pitch black. Other than the fact that you have a full moon behind you, it's pitch black. Okay, so there might be a little bit of shadow and stuff like that, but it's, it's very, very dark. So they watch this object on their screens as they're flying their plane in this circle, if you would, and, and they go around for the second time now. They've gone around once, they now go around for the second time, and then they start heading south towards and, and going on their mission because they couldn't just keep doing this. They needed to go off. But by this time, the object appears that it goes around the airport, and in fact, the control tower stopped a FedEx plane from taking off. It was sitting there on the runway, and you see it in the video clip. It's sitting there, uh, and it didn't get to take off until a lot later, so it was departing late. Uh, and then you see this object then swing back, and it comes up uh, across the runway or appears to come across the runway, and then it, it goes in like you see a, a supermarket that's in the background. And then it starts to get lower in ter terms of its uh, altitude. And it's now getting down towards the shore. And you see it in the water. And it's coming in and it did almost like a full circle from the spot where it came in. And it's now going back to that same spot. And then you look at it and you'll see that the object appears to go into the water. You lose sight of it on its thermal. And you then see like this white thing on the top of the water and it's moving along and then the next thing you see is the object appears to come up out of the water and it's as dark as it was when it went in. And by the way, in thermal, black is hot and white is cold on this setting that they had on that camera. 
And, and so then it comes up and gets really, really dark. And then you see it split into two separate objects. And when you see that split, you're going like, what did I just look at, you know? And that's what they were doing. And the, the, the one object that was behind that split off of it, and then you see it kind of like go into the water and disappears. And the other one kind of hangs up for a minute and it slowed its speed down and then it goes into the water. And so that's, that's kind of like the gist of what happened. They went on their flight mission, did their drug smuggling run, whatever they did, they got back to the airport and they said, well, this, what did we just see scratching their head? Okay, guys, so yeah, that was a much more detailed breakdown of what happened off the coast of Puerto Rico, but these things have been happening for years. We have the Shag Harbor incident, which was a reported impact of an unknown large object into the waters near Nova Scotia, a tiny fishing village on the Atlantic coast. So something very large crashed in. There were many witnesses. There have been many drawings and depictions over the years of what the object looked like. It's become a tourist attraction now. They've got billboards up and everything, and it was a real incident. Here you're seeing one of the old newspaper articles from when it happened back in 1967. We've had reports of ships encountering these unknown objects in the waters surrounding Sweden, as you're seeing in this news report here. And these reports go on and on and on. So tell me what you think. I'll keep you updated on the excuse or explanation that they come up with, if they do, with what occurred in the South China Sea. And in finishing this video, like I've always said, we have an alien planet right here on Earth. It's called the ocean. We've only explored 10% of it. What's in that other 90%? You guys tell me. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you back in just a bit.